Today, we have come together to learn something new about EQing guitars. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a high-cut, low-pass filter on heavy, distorted, high-gain guitars in a way you've probably never used it before. Time to learn something new, boys and girls. Here we go. The equalizer is the most important tool we have in the studio to influence, to change the sound of high gain guitars. Why is that? Well, we don't really use any other effects on heavy metal rhythm guitars, right? Do we need reverb? Do we need delay, chorus, anything like that? Phaser? No, we don't need that. And we don't need compression either. The compressor is the other very, very important standard tool in the studio. But just look at the waveform of a highly distorted guitar. It looks like a German sausage which is tasty, but you know, you don't need to reduce the dynamic range furthermore. That's not really needed. I know some people use compressors for adding color or adding saturation or something like that. But yeah, normally we don't really need compression here. Sometimes I use multiband compression, but that's a different story and that's for another video. So we end up with the equalizer and I usually have at least one equalizer on every guitar track in my mixes. Let me just get this clear. I don't use equalizers to change the character of my guitar tone. The character of a guitar tone, at least for me, is defined by the amplifier and the cabinet speaker microphone combination. That's where you find the character. And if you want to change the character, you better go back to the source. You better reamp the guitar track again. EQing the guitar track is only the second best option. I use equalizers not to change the character, but to make a guitar track sit in a mix or to push it into a certain direction. An equalizer is always a part of the post-processing part. Don't try to change the character with an equalizer. Sometimes you have to do that, I know, but if you use a lot of EQ, it's probably gonna sound EQ'd. It's probably gonna sound processed. So it's not gonna sound like a bright guitar, it's just gonna sound like a dull guitar that has been EQ'd to sound bright. Again, if you want to change the character, go back to the source. Nevertheless, equalizers are very, very powerful. Like I said, I want to talk about high cut filters today because they're very often overlooked and you can do a lot of, lot of cool things with them. As you might know, I'm working on my own little academy. The Cola Audio Cult. Most Evil Academy, and it's gonna be launched sometime this year. So I'm working on a lot of courses, hours and hours of material, and what you are about to watch is a course, which is I think one hour or something long, about EQing guitars. And I'm just gonna show you that snippet about the high cut filter to, yeah, to get your attention. So if you are interested in an academy that will teach you how to record, mix, master heavy metal, with a host as beautiful and charming as me, but don't worry, there will be other people as well, uh, you better subscribe to my email list uh, to be informed about what's going on. In this part, I'm tweaking a pair of rhythm guitars that I have reamped through a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier and with a pretty standard setup, Mesa Boogie Cab, Vintage 30, SM57. And it's a really aggressive, bright sounding guitar tone that needs to be tamed a little bit. And this is where the high cut filter enters the stage. Here we go. But let's talk about the high cut filter because it's one of the most effective weapons you have in an EQ. You can do a lot of things. People think you can just use it to remove noise, hiss in the high end or some kind of sizzle. And that is true, especially if you use a very steep setting like this. But that's not all you can do, especially if you use the filter in a less steep setting. This becomes a filter that not only removes very high frequencies, but that also changes that balance I've been talking about between the noise and the tonal parts. Very important. And it's also very effective to control the overall brightness of your guitar tone. Let me show you how this works. It depends obviously on the two parameters you have. So you can change the frequency, but you can also change how steep this filter is. And if we want to use this traditionally, just to get rid of the his in the highs, 
the, the, the sizzle and the highs, we should use a pretty steep filter, like 36 dB per octave or 30 dB per octave or something. Let's do that. Can you hear the difference? So this way, we're just removing some unwanted hizzy frequencies in the, on the very top, but we're not really changing the guitar tone. Let's have another listen. I have to say the guitar tone already becomes a little more defined if we do that. Now, if I make this filter less steep, just like that, let's go to 12 dB per octave. And if I move it further down, let's see what happens. Now listen to the balance of the noisy part of the signal and the actual tonal information. You can now hear a lot better what you actually play. So we're moving from a noisy into a more tonal and vocal direction. Let's have another listen. Very effective. So when I had the filter around 6K, we were not only removing the very high frequencies here, we were also reducing the, the upper mid bite and we were reducing the noisy overtones and it sounded more defined, not because I had more highs, but it sounded more defined because I was focusing on the, the more tonal information of that sound. And this is something I want you to remember. We have achieved definition, but not by boosting the highs or boosting the upper mids, which is what most people do if they want to achieve more definition, but by actually removing frequencies that were covering our actual tonal information. Increasing definition by removing higher frequencies. Interesting, right? This way I actually concentrate on what's important. And if I move this further down, I can darken the guitar tone. So that's the next stage. First stage is I'm removing the upper his. Second stage is I'm readjusting the balance, reducing the noise, and then I'm darkening the tone. So maybe I want that. If I want things to be smoother and more gentle, I just use the same filter, it's just one filter, and I can do three things at once. Let's have a listen. Wow, what a difference. And if you look at this, you can see we are removing a lot here, but because the filter is not that steep, we are just removing a tiny little bit here. Let's try 6 dB. Oh, that works. Awesome, right? So you see how one simple filter can change the guitar tone so much. I think most of you, of you guys have nev never used something like this because it looks weird. But again, you are doing three things that really help a guitar tone like this. What I want you to learn is that a high cut filter is a very important weapon and you can do several things at once and you don't always need five EQ bands. But let's move on. I want to show you all the other important frequency areas in the mid range. And this is where I use normal peak or bell EQ bands. Let's go. 
Have you ever used a high-cut filter like that? Probably not. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. What I want you to take away is that you don't need 55 different EQ bands and that you don't need to boost or cut 8 or 10 dB to make a guitar tone sound great. It starts with the source and this is where you should find the right character for your guitar tone and then you tweak it, you fine tune it with an EQ later. And if you need a lot of EQ bands and a lot of boosts and cuts, probably there's something wrong in the first place. There's something wrong with your amplifier or with your miking setup, something like this. You better revisit that setup instead of whatever, adding 10 dBs of highs or lows or something like that with an equalizer later. If you want to learn something about finding great guitar tones, what I can recommend is my high gain guitar tone crafting course. You'll find a link below. Get that course, learn something about choosing the right amplifiers, combining them with the right speakers and the right microphones. And it doesn't really matter if you're working outside of the box with the real hardware or if you are using plugins. The mindset is the same, it's just different tools. So if you want to learn something about that, High Gain Guitar Tone Crafting, a course released by ProMix Academy. And yeah, if you're interested in joining my academy, uh, there will be a lot of courses there and there will be other people doing courses and you can get in touch with me and we're planning a lot of cool stuff if I just had more time, right? So subscribe to my email list and yeah, better be informed about what's going on. If you subscribe, there's also a link in the final confirmation email to my Discord server, where there's already quite a few people, nice people. It's a closed server, but you can join if you join my email list. Nice server with a lot of people talking about audio production. Cool people. So I hope to see you there. Uh, ask me questions, ask other people questions. I see you there. And later this year, I hope to see you in the Cola Audio Cult. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.